Okay, so next on complex numbers, uh, we're looking at uh, graphing a complex number. Now, it seems strange to say you just graph a number um, and it has two axes like this, um, but we have two types of number. Okay, so um, we still essentially just have a regular real number line um, that's horizontal, just like a number line usually is. Okay, but then we just extend this in, uh, into the horizontal, uh, into the vertical, sorry, um, with imaginary numbers. Okay, so uh, we have two on the real number and three on our imaginary number. Okay, and that means that I can graph it there. Okay, that is two plus three i. Um, okay, and this is uh, called an Argand diagram. Okay, the set of axes where I have the real numbers on the x-axis, or what we used to call the x-axis, and the uh, imaginary numbers on the y-axis, if you will. Okay, uh, so it's just kind of like a number line, but for complex numbers. Okay, so, um, well, why do we do this? What do we need to do with this now? Um, well, it would be, it's going to be very helpful if we know, firstly, what this angle is, and secondly, how long this line is. Okay, and that will become clear why when we look at uh, different forms of um, expressing complex numbers. Okay, so, um, well, how would we find those things? And what, uh, what are they called? What are the notations for those? So um, the length of the line, firstly, we might call that the absolute value of Z. We might call that the modulus or mod Z. Um, it's got lots of names, sorry. Um, it's got, we could call it R and we can call it, uh, well, we can have this uh, absolute value notation. Okay, so um, you probably see these final two the most often, okay? But yeah, you can just refer to it as mod Z. Um, and as you can imagine, this is the length of a diagonal line, and this is simply Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So two squared plus three squared, and this is just root 13. Okay, so that's the length of this line. Um, okay, then we come to this angle uh, and we're going to call it the argument of Z. Okay, and also just given by a theta, as many angles are. Um, so how do we find this angle? Uh, well, I'm sure you've done this kind of thing before in other topics. And we will just make a right angle triangle. Okay, it has a three there, a two there. And um, what are these? This is uh, the opposite and the adjacent. Uh, so this is going to be arc 10 or inverse 10 of uh, opposite over adjacent. So three over two. And just do that on my calculator. Okay, in, in radians, that's going to be uh, 0 0.983, okay, um, which makes sense. Uh, half pi would be around there. That would be around uh, 1.5 something. Uh, so 0 0.98 uh, seems about right for this angle. Okay, so we will come to express it in terms of this root 13 and this 0 0.983. Uh, in a later video. Um, so let's just do one more example. Um, let's graph 5 minus uh, 2i and also think about its uh, modulus and argument as well. Um, so 5 uh, is here, uh, minus 2i would be down here. So that's going to be there. Okay, um, so maybe I'll just get rid of this. Otherwise it'll get very cramped. Um, 
so the angle now is going to be uh, all the way around to here um, unless in some cases you might just give it the negative angle like that um, but we're going to go with the positive angle for now um, and so well what is this um, angle going to be uh, well you can still go with uh, arc 10 of the uh, imaginary part over um, over the real part um, so that's going to be minus 2 uh, over 5 okay and my calculator is telling me uh, negative 0 0.38 um, no, 381 even. Now, I said I wanted this big positive angle. Okay, so um, how can I go from this negative angle all the way around to this angle? Uh, well, that's a, adding a whole full turn. That's adding 360 degrees or adding 2 pi. Okay, so this was zero, uh, negative 0 0.381, but I am going to add 2 pi to this. Um, add 2 pi. I'm going to get uh, 5.90. Okay, so that is the argument of this um, complex number. Okay, and what about the length of this line, the modulus? Um, well, that doesn't really um, depend on quadrants and negatives uh, too much. Um, obviously, you're just going to take 2 and 5 and do square root of 2 squared plus 5 squared. And that's going to be the square root of 29. Okay, um, now... How, just quickly, what about this 2 pi? When do I add 2 pi? Okay, so um, if I am in the fourth quadrant, like that last one, um, that will happen every time. Um, you will get the negative angle given to you on your calculator. And, well, if you are working from 0 to 2 pi and not a minus pi to pi system, um, you will add 2 pi. Okay, so you'll do your arc ten of the imaginary part over the real part, and you'll add two pi uh, in the fourth quadrant. Okay, um, we saw already in the first quadrant that you can just do arc ten, and it won't be a problem. Um, now, if you imagine you had one that was here, okay, you would have a negative over a negative, and that would just, your calculator would just assume that it's the equivalent positive fraction and give you this angle here, okay? And you can see that you probably are going to have to add this half turn here, which means adding pi, okay? So in the third quadrant, you're going to do arc 10 um, of the, the normal thing plus pi. Um, and finally, if I had, let's say, um, this complex number, okay, um, you'd still be entering into your calculator this negative fraction, arc 10 of a negative fraction, and um, well, we already saw uh, what your calculator assumed this would be, okay? It assumed this would be the negative uh, version here. And, okay, so to get from this fourth quadrant that your calculator thinks you're in to the second one, uh, we are going to add pi here as well. Okay, so second and third quadrants add pi. Um, first quadrant, don't need to do anything, just I 10. Um, fourth quadrant, add 2 pi. Okay, if you're ever confused, just draw a very quick Argand diagram, okay, and um, you'll 
very quickly see uh, whether you've made a big mistake or not.